it really hit me recently as I was thinking about and reflecting on a business trip I had taken to New York some time ago. Now, you can imagine that I travel quite a lot, and you can also imagine that I can usually find a pretty good room at a Hyatt hotel, so that's usually where I'm staying. But in this instance, I had an early morning meeting with a friend of mine, and through our discussion, we realized that our time was going to be compressed. So we decided that I would stay with him at his home in Darien, Connecticut, so that we would have the time on the commute between w waking up in the morning and our meeting time to actually catch up and fill out time. So I, I go to his house, and he lives in this big, very old house, over 100 years old, and he's taking me upstairs to show me to the guest room. And we walk up this wooden staircase, and it is really loud, like creaking. So we get to the top of the staircase, and we go down this hallway, a very long hallway with a wooden plank floor. So I'm walking down this hallway, we pass the door to the master bedroom, he and his wife had a, their bedroom there, and at the end of the hall on the left side is where the guest room is. By the time I get to this guest room, I am seriously anxiety ridden, because all I can think about is how much noise I'm gonna be making while I'm in this person's house. And so immediately, I'm now obsessing, like how do I minimize my impact on their lives? So over dinner, I'm like, you know, so tell me, uh, what time do you usually get up? And um, do you go out for a run in the morning? And is someone coming down to make coffee? I'm trying to triangulate, like, how I can conduct myself while I'm there to tread lightly and to minimize the impact I have on their routine, on their lives. And here, in this instance, I'm the guest, and they're the host. And I'm the one sweating what impact I'm gonna have on them. And as I sat back and I thought about it, it really introduced a, a tremendous paradox in my mind because in, in our industry, in the hotel business, we refer to people who come into our hotels as guests. I mean, we have an entire lexicon around it. We have guest rooms and guest satisfaction and we have guest metrics. And we consider ourselves to be hosts. But for a moment, imagine if you reverse that. Just imagine if you took a walk in a guest's shoes. When you do that, you realize that those of you staying in our hotels are not the guests at all. It's us, the hotels, that are the guests in your lives. Lives that don't start or stop when you come through the front door of our hotel. Guests are people. They have their own routines. They have their own responsibilities. They've got their own emotions. They're anxieties, and those things carry on while they're with us. You quickly think about the fact that the best thing that we could do to care for you would be to tread lightly, not interfere with your routine, allow you to go on your, your own pace and maintain the cadence of your life. Because we're the guests in your lives. So this morning I'd like to pose a question, which is, what if hotels treated guests like hosts? What if hotels checked into guests' lives instead of guests checking into hotels? In other words, what if hotels were guests in the lives of others? Seeing the world through others' eyes is exactly the kind of reverse perspective that I think our industry needs desperately. A lot of people these days talk about empathy. I know I'm one of them. And empathy is most often described as the act of walking in someone else's shoes. What does the Hyatt brand, the parent Hyatt brand, mean to people who are going and staying in a Hyatt hotel? What are, what are some of the distinguishing, unique qualities? Well, first and foremost, it's got to be a sense of, um, of care that we bring to bear. That, we, that people feel um, both cared for and also a sense of, of connectivity to our team. Mm -hmm. So that's, that is at the core of, of... We're here at a Hyatt right now, and I can't tell you the number of times I've been greeted. In fact, the only time that I felt this way in a, in a, um, in a hotel environment that I remember recently was 
being out at Wynn Resorts. We had we had a leadership development group that went out and we had an hour and a half meeting with Steve Wynn, which was incredible. That's but great. everywhere you went around Wynn, there there was just a uh, very warm greeting yeah. from everyone, and yeah. you know willingness to jump in and help you at anything. So that's that's number one at Hyatt. So that's really the core, that's the, that's the core essence of what it means to be in a Hyatt property. Mm-hmm. And um, and our values span all of our brands, but the, and they, they do represent how we bring ourselves to what we do. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that has to do with mutual respect and about uh, compassion and about caring. Mm-hmm. So that's really at the core. Mm-hmm. My next example is, um, is something that happened at the Park Hyatt in Chennai in India. And um, I was there a few weeks ago, and the owner, the developer of the hotel, um, had a son who was very involved in the process. Uh, His name is Amit, and um, he's in his late 20s, very accomplished young man, and very involved in the development of the hotel, and especially this magnificent restaurant we have there. It's five levels, six different kitchens. You can get cuisine from any part of the world and order it all together at the same time. Very complicated operating model to be able to deliver that. So they were assembling people, this was about six months ago, to staff this very complicated and very uh, high-end experience. Um, This restaurant has now become the talk of uh, India, actually. A lot of people are flocking to Chennai just to experience it. Um, And during the course of this, Amit met these two. Uh, On the left is Ali, and on the right is Kimi. And they were really warm individuals, but quite withdrawn. And Amit didn't really understand it because they sort of had a magnetic presence about them, but they weren't really engaging. And it turned out, after his inquiry, that Ali suffered from a terrible lisp, so much so that he really couldn't express himself. And Kimi, in like manner, had a real speech impediment. Now, it turns out, luckily, that Amit had a background in the theater. And he suggested to our head of food and beverage that maybe we need to get a voice coach, an elocution coach, and and help them along. Now, we could have just said, you know what? We've got so many applicants for this job. This has got to be a really special environment. Let's just go get people who can actually express themselves. But instead, Amit and our team recognized the special spirit in in these two. And they dedicated themselves and really applied effort to get them over their challenges. And within a few weeks, and if any of you have seen Colin Firth and uh, the King's Speech, you know how painful this can be. But in a few weeks, they each made a breakthrough. And during this period of time, Ali had, had admitted to Amit that his secret desire, his, his great goal, was to be able to serve a table, to in, interact with a guest, and be able to express himself. Because they, were, they both suffered from a, a, a lack of self-confidence as a result of their challenges. And so as, as things progressed and as, as they became more and more comfortable and ended up with breakthroughs in their ability to express one, themselves, Ali did become a server. He was so good that he was assigned to uh, a pretty big area, but um, he was often uh, lingering at the table side, chit-chatting away because he was unleashed and liberated from his prior challenge, and they had to coach him in the other direction and say, Ali, you know, you actually have to serve more tables. <laughs> We've got to get you back in the productivity mode. So he was completely liberated, and his life was really transformed from that point. Kimmy, in a most unlikely development, ended up being assigned to be the host of this restaurant, so she's the first person you would encounter. Quite extraordinary. But make no mistake about it, in my conversation with Amit, what I realized is that he was transformed too. This is actually the spirit in which Hyatt was founded 55 years ago. And the, it would be great if that kind of emotional connectedness actually occurred every time that we had an interaction with one of our colleagues or one of our guests. Now, a lot of companies say, well, of course, our people are our most, our most valuable asset, our most important asset. And oftentimes, the conception of great policy and great procedure around employment practices is what, is what results from this consciousness. But every once in a while, you see a company that steps back and turns it around and reverses perspective and gains a critical insight. And that critical insight leads to the idea that an employer can work for its employees as much as the other way around. And the example I would give you is Netflix. For those of you who know Netflix, you know that they have a very, very strong culture. 
that culture is what they've leaned on to really transform the business through a very disrupted time in what they've done. But the insight that they, they, they achieved and then acted on was the idea that families with young, new, new families with young children, with infants, um, need extra support. And it's not just a maternity leave policy that they needed, it was a paternity leave policy as well. And they introduced a paternity leave benefit that extends for a year because their insight was the whole family is affected. It's not just uh, the mother in, typical, in a typical uh, circumstance where a newborn is a part of a, a family or where a, a couple may have uh, adopted a child. And that reverse perspective really caught hold and, and really communicated loudly to everyone that was working at Netflix and caught a lot of other attention as well. And I think you all know how successful that culture has been in, in how Netflix has done what they've done. You know, there's that old adage that um, failure is an orphan, but success is, has many, I guess, well-rested fathers. Maybe that's what they had in mind. Um,